Hello everybody, my name's David and I'm the head of R&D at Candle Shack. The reason we have an R&D department at Candle Shack is because making candles, while it might seem easy, is actually more challenging than you might think. Each candle consists of four different components. We have the container for the candle, we have the wax in the candle, we have the fragrance oil in the candle and also we have the wick in the candle. Each time you change any of these first three components, it's very likely you're going to have to change the wick as well. With our wealth of experience, we are going to be able to talk you through the process that we use in our R&D labs and hopefully that will help you to go on to make your own beautiful candles. There are four building blocks that you have to take into consideration when you're making your container candle. The first of these building blocks is the container itself. Our most popular container is the 30 cl container. 30 cl means 30 centilitres or 300 millilitres. Candle glasses come in all sorts of colours as well as different sizes. We have 20 centilitres, 9 centilitres. Choose whatever colour you like, we have plenty. The second building block in your candle is the candle wax. A variety of different types of wax are available. Several plant waxes are available from us also mineral waxes, it's really up to you to choose which one suits your needs, which one suits your brand or hobby. The wax you order can come in different formats. Some waxes come in pastel form, other waxes in flake form. As a general rule of thumb, one 800 gram container of wax will be enough wax to make four 30 cl candles, each 30 cl candle containing approximately 200 grams of wax. The third building block in your container candle is probably the most fun. It's the fragrance oil that you're going to put in your candle, which is going to, of course, determine what your candle is going to smell like, both when it's cold and when it's hot, known as the cold throw and the hot throw of the candle. How do you decide what a candle is going to smell like without smelling it? We can help you there. If you look at our website for any of our fragrance oils, you will find a description of the fragrance notes for that particular oil. We have a range of fragrance oils available, so there should be something there for everyone, including a selection of 100% natural essential oils. The fourth building block in your container candle is a bit different from the first three. The first three, the container, the wax, and the fragrance oil, you get to choose these yourself. The fourth component, the wick, you can't really choose that yourself. The wick of choice is determined by whichever combination of the first three building blocks you have chosen. For example, if you choose to use a bigger container, you will probably have to use a bigger wick. Whichever wax you choose, simply go to the page for that wax on our website and there you will find recommendations for what wick types you should use in each size of candle. So there we have it. We've covered all four building blocks in your container candle. Now we're going to go over the process that we use to actually make the candle. And we're going to talk about best practice in wicking the candle, in measuring your wax and your fragrance oil, how to mix your wax and fragrance oil, the pouring of the candle, the setting of the candle, and the cutting of the wick. The first step is wicking the candle. When we talk about wicking, all we mean is how to fix the wick to the candle container. So first of all, we take the wick, the metal part at the bottom of the wick is called the sustainer. We fix a sticky pad to the sustainer. We peel back the protective coating. We then fix the other side of the sticky pad to the base of the candle glass. Press it down firmly and it's stuck. The next part that's very important is to get tension on the wick and to make sure the wick remains vertical. For this, we're going to use a wick claw. Pull the wick over into the second hole of the wick claw for a 30 cl glass. This will ensure that the wick remains in a vertical position. This is extremely important because if your wick is not centered and if it's not vertical, the wick will lean to one side as the candle burns down it could mean you have a load of wax on one side of the candle and a load of soot on the other side. The second step in making your container candle is to measure the quantities of each component that you're going to add to the candle. By components, we're talking about the wax and the fragrance oil. How do you know how much fragrance oil to put in your wax? It's quite simple. You go to the product page for that wax, 
There you will find recommended fragrance contents for that given wax. The fragrance content is the percentage of fragrance oil that that wax will quite happily accommodate. For example, a 30 cl candle glass will quite happily accommodate 220 grams of a mixture of wax and fragrance oil. If your fragrance oil is added 10%, 10% of 220 is 22 grams. So we know that this candle at 10% will require 22 grams of fragrance oil and the remaining weight will be 198 grams of wax. The third step is mixing the components for your candle. There are various methods available to mix the wax and the fragrance oil and we're going to talk about some of these. The first method we're going to talk about is the double boiler. The double boiler is a recommended and preferred way of mixing candle wax in the lab. It's a pot with a jacket of water round about it which prevents the candle wax from becoming too hot. Another method of melting candle wax is to melt the wax in a bowl above a pot of hot water. This is not a method that we would recommend. A third method of melting your candle wax is using a microwave. Interestingly, this method will only work with plant waxes. Once again, a useful tip is to refer to your wax product page where you will find useful information about the heating and pouring temperatures of your chosen wax. So now I'm going to demonstrate how to pour the candle. We have our fragranced wax in here. We're going to pour it into the candle glass. As always, it's good practice to check your candle wax product page as some waxes require you to heat the candle glass before pouring it. Typically, we would pour the wax to a level of around 10 millimeters below the surface of the candle glass. If, however, you want to use a lid on your candles, leave a bit of space to make sure that your lid is going to fit inside the glass after you've poured. Okay, so now you've poured your candle. Within a few hours, your candle will have set solid and you're excited, you're desperate to light your candle. But hold off on that for a short time. As candle wax sets, it's a process known as crystallisation or curing as it's known by some people. For the best results, it's best to wait up to 48 hours for your candle to cure fully. If you do this, you will get the best burning performance from your candle. Be aware that when you're curing your candle, allowing the crystallisation to take place, make sure that the room or the area you're working in doesn't get too cold. Try and keep it around a normal room temperature for best results. The final step is to trim the wick on your candle. Remove the wick wire, trim the candle typically to a height of 10 millimetres. As a general rule of thumb, you wouldn't want your wick to be any higher than the top of the candle glass. It's worth noting though that if you're about to light your candle, it can be good practice to trim this down to 5 or 6 millimetres, which will give you a better first burn on your candle. So how do you know if you've made the perfect candle? What does good look like or what does good smell like? The perfect candle should be filled to around 10 millimetres below the top of the glass. The surface of your wax should be smooth. The wick should be trimmed to 10 millimetres. Importantly, the wick should be vertical and centred at the point of pouring. If you've done all of these things, your candle should burn with a nice, clean flame with not too much soot and it should have a lovely fragrance throw.